we are going to talk about today how there are different learning styles and the theory behind them, and we are going to debunk that theory behind learning styles. Um, so first of all, there there's an acronym VARC, that there's four learning styles. There's visual learning, which means that people learn by seeing. There's auditory learning, which means that people learn by hearing or by speaking. There's the reading and writing learning, which I kind of clumped together with visual learning, which means that they obviously learn by reading or writing, which is a very visual type of learning. And then there's kinesthetic learning, which means that they learn by doing and moving. Um, like, for example, I teach PE, and it's kind of expected that all of the students in PE are learning kinesthetically by doing and moving. Um, so I found this this picture because it's an example of a visual learner. I think it's kind of funny how if you look around the picture, there's the dad sitting in the chair. He's reading the paper. The dog even has a label on it with the cat and the window. Um, this kind of reminds me of my Spanish teacher when I was in high school because around her classroom, she would have labels on like everything around the room that would help us learn what that word was in Spanish so that we could start applying it to our learning. Um, so it was believed that each person had their own learning style and if they used the strategy specific to that, that they would learn better. So I remember learning about this when I was getting my undergraduate degree that like each person has a specific learning style and that us as teachers have to adapt to their type of learning which will help them learn better. So for example, if um, a teacher was teaching specifically to a learning style, that means that if a student is an auditory learner, they would listen to someone read a text, like if they were doing a read aloud, and then they would talk to a partner about their thoughts and notes. So again, it was the theory that, that learners were strictly categorized into different learning profiles as a visual learner, an auditory learner, and then a kinesthetic learner. I think this is kind of funny, again, just because I'm a PE teacher. Let's skip to the grass, that's a good idea, and the students are skipping along. Um, but it was actually found that most students, when they were given the VARC assessment, they were found that they were a combination of learning styles. So if you can see in the middle, there's a visual, auditory, kinesthetic learner. So that means that students learn better when they're given a variety of different methods of instruction versus just one, or a variety of study habits versus just one. So the newspaper, The Scientific American, did a study on an anatomy class and in the study that they found, uh, or they, they searched for usage of the VARC results, and then they were also studying if, if the results are applied, if they're better for the students. And they found that even after knowing their VARC profile, 70% of the students did not even use the strategies that align with their profile. So for example, if a student is a visual learner, they would use labels and highlight in their book or so on, like the example that I gave of the auditory learner, that 70% of them weren't even using their, their um, help that would help them absorb better. But then they also found that the ones that did use the study tools that aligned with their VARC profile, so if they were a visual learner, they did read and use labels and highlight, but they found that they actually didn't perform any better than the students that didn't. Um, so I like this last paragraph that the problem is not just that trying to learn in your style doesn't help, it can cost you. Learning style theories ignore the fact that one mental strategy may be much better suited than another particular task. So in the book, How We Learn the Surprising Truth About When, Where, and Why It Happens, psychologists who study learning tend to focus on one of the two areas, motor-movement or verbal academic. So in college, they're often taught separately as motor and perceptual skills, which is the motor movement, and then cognition and memory. The two systems are biologically distinct, so it's stood to reason that they're functionally distinct too, and how they develop, strengthen, and fade. So it's interesting because in the book, they said that cognition and memory is located in the hippocampus of the brain, but motor and perceptual skills are 
not in the hippocampus. So it's no wonder that people learn differently because they're not even in the same section of the brain. Um, so I like this quote. It says, picking up Spanish is not the same as picking up a Spanish guitar. And so psychology has a separate tradition to categorize each. So why would we even expect that students would learn the same thing, but in different ways and only in that one way when it's in different parts of the brain? So we might as well use all parts of the brain. Um, so there's many proven study techniques like spacing out study sessions over time, quizzing yourself on material and so many other things, or th simply transforming your thinking to match the task. So an example of that would be if you're doing a spelling test, if you're in elementary school, you should be doing a visual and auditory technique, but that doesn't mean that you're just a visual or an auditory learner and you should only use those techniques. The Association for Psychological Science found that these learning techniques to be, are to be the most effective instead of just learning and trying to study based off of your own VARC profile. They found that these techniques such as highlighting and underlining or as you're reading, you're imagining certain things and distributed practice. So studying over time instead of just cramming that these methods were proven to be the most effective versus only studying to your VARC. So there it is. We've debunked learning theories. We've found what works better. And here are the references.